Hello again. Um, this new design for um, a spring-powered dragster has solved a problem I've had for oh, nearly 20 years now. I've got several thousand of these springs in stock. Um, they're called expendable springs because they were originally intended to be used in secondary school science. Um, I think they were used to uh, investigate Hooke's Law. Um, I don't think that's part of the science curriculum anymore. Um, they're very cheap. Um, I, they're available from my shop. I sell them at 10p each. Um, and it's taken me ages to work out um, how to uh, use them to make a moving toy. And um, I, I think uh, that this design is, um, could be done by year five and six. Um, we start off making the uh, chassis of the dragster. I'm going to use um, uh, 8mm by 8mm square section wood. Um, the shape isn't too important, but it does have to be quite long. Um, this, this is about, let's see, I think it's about 40 centimetres long. Uh, it can't be any, any shorter than that. Um, what shape it is is not too important. It could be a, a rectangle. Um, I think it's going to be a, look a bit more interesting if it is the um, tapered shape that, that real dragsters are. So we're going to make it narrow at the front and wider at the back. So um, I'm going to use a glue gun to glue this shape together and then I'm going to strengthen the corners with card triangle. This is a technique that I've used before in these videos. It's a very useful technique. Uh, I don't know if it's still called, it used to be called the Jinx method. J-I-N-K-S. So uh, let's see if my glue gun's warmed up. Just untangle it and um, We'll put the ends on. Uh, I think it's important because it's going to have a spring pulling it this way. I think it's important that the ends go at the end of the wood rather than inside. Otherwise, the spring is going to try and pull that down. So uh, try and remember to put the ends on the wood. I'm going to do the the back end first because there's something we've got to remember when we do the front. Just put some glue on the ends here. Yes, the glue gun has warmed up. One, two. I'm so pleased to have finally um, come up with this design. I think I'm going to add it to my workshops. Now, before we glue that end on, we need to remember to put the um, spring on it. That saves having to add a hook or something to fix the spring onto. We can just simply loop it over there. And now we can glue that onto the onto the end. There we go. So that's glued onto the end like that. Put it back on the table to make sure that it's, it's flat. And now I'm going to reinforce those four corners with the card triangles. It's amazing how a thin piece of card like this does make it so much stronger. and there and then the front now we might need to trim these a little bit so I'm just going to snip off two corners there and we'll glue them on taking care not to get glue on the fingers and then the last one Oop, there we go so we've got a nice strong chassis there with the with the spring fixed at one end well we're now going to um, turn it over and um, start work on the bearings for the axles. Um, I think we just need to um, strengthen the sides here to give um, uh, a greater gluing surface to glue the bearings onto. So I've just got two um, small bits of square section wood here that I'm just going to glue onto the outside. I don't think I have to measure it, I think I can just um, do that by eye. And the other one. There we go. 
So we've got those two fixed in place. And then I'm going to glue a jumbo straw across, try and get it um, parallel with the back of the racer. So I'm going to put some, this is low melt glue, quite a large blob of glue on each side and glue the straw down into place. Try not to bend it like that. And I always put a, a loop of glue over the straw to lock it in place. There we go. And actually to make it even stronger um, I'm going to put two very small pieces of wood on that side of the straw because the spring is going to be pulling on that axle so just to be absolutely on the safe side probably over engineering I'm just going to back that straw with a piece of wood there now um, we need to have the axle exposed in the middle because we're going to tie wrap some spring around, uh, string around it so I'm just going to cut that centre section out like that and we don't need that much sticking out the ends it needs to stick out a bit to stop the wheel from rubbing on the side I think I'll leave um, a centimetre sticking out there we go so that's the um, that's the rear bearings done uh, we're now going to work on the on the front bearings um, got a slight problem here because uh, we need to make sure that the straw doesn't get in the bearings don't get in the way of the spring so this time we're just going to put two pieces of wood on top of the uh, chassis sides like that to raise the axle up so that it clears the spring. So I'm just going to glue two small pieces of C100 square section wood like that and once again put glue on those two surfaces. and put the straw across make sure it's parallel again by looking at the end and once again loop some glue over this axle isn't under any great force so I'm not quite so worried about it being super strong and uh, we can leave the centre section of the straw in place so I just need to trim off the um, ends of the straw to leave about a centimetre sticking out like that. So that's the chassis almost complete. Uh, we're now going to add the wheels and axles. Um, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to do the front axle first. I'm going to use these um, large MDF wheels. All these materials and components are available from my shop. We could use four millimetre axle. Um, all of these wheels I'm going to use I've drilled them out uh, to fit 5mm down. Just looking for the one that's falling on the floor. So, um, let's tap that axle in. So, these wheels I've drilled out the hole slightly so that's a nice tight fit um, so we don't have to use glue. We slide that through and tap on another wheel like that. Okay, we've got a bit too much gap there so we'll use um, a gap, it could be the gap between two tables. I'm going to use two blocks of wood here just to tap that axle through a bit more. But look at, keep a close eye on the straw, make sure you leave a small gap. There we are. So now there's just a small gap and the wheels turn really well. We're now going to uh, work on the driven axle and again we're going to use um, a piece of 5mm dowel and the secret of this um, moving toy success is we're going to use very large wheels. Um, these are 3mm uh, Corex discs that I've cut. Um, I will make these for you, they're available from my shop. Um, they're actually sold as zoetrope discs because um, usually I'll make black ones and they're the discs that I use to make my zoetrope. Um, 
yeah, uh, that's another video in, in this series. But um, if, if, if you email me, I will supply these ready-made. Of course, you can make your own by cutting out some cardboard. Um, now, we could try and glue the axle in, but as you can see, it's a bit wobbly. So we're going to use um, two MDF wheels. We're going to put them on and then glue the large wheels onto the MDF wheels. So first of all, I'm going to uh, tap on this longer axle. And once again we're going to tap it through a gap because we need a, a little bit of actual sticking through to help us to locate it onto the card disc like that. So I'm now going to glue that on. Just checking to see that we're going to have enough. I think I may have to cut those straws a bit shorter but I'm not too worried about that. So we'll just glue on the disc. Like this. There's one. Slide it through the rear bearings. Yes, we've almost got enough. I can cut those straws a bit shorter. Don't need to be sticking out that much. And the same the other side. So now we'll slide it through. There we are. We've now got. Um, Plenty of axle sticking out the other side, that's spinning really well. And once again we um, tap on another wheel. And to work the axle through the hole, put it over a gap. Keep tapping. Keep an eye on it, make sure there's always a little gap. We can go a little bit more. Make sure the whole thing spins really easily, it does. And now we can put some glue on there and glue on the second large disc. Glue gun's nearly running out of glue. I think I've got enough. There we are. So that's our dragster almost finished. All we've got to do now is to connect the spring to the driven axle um, via some uh, string. Now we're going to just tie the string onto the spring. I was very good at knots. Now you can just um, fix the string onto the axle by wrapping it round. If you pass it along, I don't know if you can see that, pass it along the axle that way first of all and then as you wind it up, wind over the top of the spring, it will stay on. But I find that incredibly fiddly. There we are. It is possible. And um, one of the advantages of doing that is that when, uh, when it runs along, when the spring Come, when the string comes to the end it will just come off and it will allow the drags to, to freewheel even further. So if you want to make your drags to go the maximum possible distance then don't fix the string onto the axle. Um, I prefer to fix it on. Um, if I wasn't videoing this I'd use, um, glue, I'd use put some hot glue on here and uh, fix it on. But uh, I don't suppose we should really be touching hot glue, so I'm going to use some sellotape. And we'll just put this string along the axle. I think I've got too much there. I only need um, a bit of slack. Lay it along the axle and just wrap some sellotape round. Like that to fix it on. And you can wind it up by, by turning the axle. You'll soon learn which way to turn it. It, it should really go in that direction. And you can wind it up. And Oh no, I've done it the wrong way. How embarrassing. Yeah, I think I've done it the right way now. And you can see that that's working already. Um, but that's quite tedious to wind it up via the axle. I find it's much more convenient if you put a handle on the wheel. 
I've got another MDF wheel here and I've drilled another 4.5mm hole and if I just tap a short piece of dowel into there and then glue it onto the end of that axle there we've turned that into um, a handle I've just seen I've got a piece of Corex sticking out there I wonder if I can cut that off quickly yep there we go put some glue in the glue gun and we'll just glue that handle onto there might need to hammer this on no, I think I can push it on and with a handle it is much much easier to wind up your spring dragster and as you can see as you'll see in the um, sequence coming up uh, this will go this goes a long way this will go at least 15 meters um, one thing you do have to do though is uh, you'll soon discover that the wheels will spin and to stop that happening it needs some weight put on the end and uh, it needs about 150 grams you could um, glue a piece of cardboard or corex onto here and then uh, glue on a, a yogurt pot or a margarine tub which you could load up with marbles or pebbles or sand even um, I'm just going to glue, I've got some, a block of wood here that um, is fairly heavy and I'm just going to glue that in place so by doing that it stops the um, large back wheels from spinning there we go so um, I hope you enjoy making these and um, check out um, check, um, ch check out these uh, dragster running in the next sequence. Okay, let's wind it up. Try and keep the string in the middle of the axle. If it goes over to in here, where the straw bearings are, it will jam up. There we go. It's much easier with the handle built into the wheel. And let's see how far it goes. This hole is 18 metres long. That's about 15 metres. And it has got another trick up its sleeve. Don't know if we're going to be lucky enough to get this to work. If I give it a push, with a bit of luck, it will come back.